It's my pleasure to be here, and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk about my study on the coherent Ising machines. Uh, in the previous talk, Mark Mahon presented the experimental aspects of that machine, so you know the detail of that machine. <laughs> so you know what it, the coherent Ising machine is. That is a network of degenerate optical parametric oscillators. We call them DOPOs. And uh, this is a schematic figure of that architecture in the Stanford University. And uh, DOPO is a uh, squeezed light. And uh, that is a kind of typical quantum light. And uh, we utilize uh, phases. One of the properties we utilize is phase of a DOPO converges on zero or pi. And uh, so we regard them shallow using variables. Uh, that is a schematic diagram of potential functions of a DOPO. And uh, X denotes the quadrature amplitude. And roughly speaking, the positive X corresponds to the phase zero, and the negative X corresponds to phase pi. And the function is symmetric, so we obtain the either phase zero or pi at random, so we can regard them using variables. And the coupling of the OPOs realizes the uh, bias loop phases like that. And uh, uh, bias loop phases are expected to be configuration. Uh, bias loop phases of multiple DOPOs are expected to be the uh, configuration of solutions for using spins and using Hamiltonian for target optimization program embedded in the network. So the CIM is a network of DOPOs for solving optimization problems. Uh, and the efficiency of the actual CIM is shown in previous Macron talks. So you know that uh, the CIM is work well anywhere. At least work well. Good. Excellent. But we have naive questions. Uh, how do the CIMs find good solutions? and uh, what problems can or cannot the CIMs correctly solve? And uh, in actual CIMs, we utilize now the FTGA to manage coupling of DOPOs. But originally, uh, we utilized the opti optical couplings, the direct coupling of DOPOs. So what about the efficiency of optical coupling? And uh, the last one is the ultimate question to be solved. What is the schedule that guarantees the CIM to obtain optimal solution? Uh, unfortunately, we now have only intuition supported by experiments and numerical simulations. So we now need uh, some theoretical view to answer the questions. But uh, sorry, I cannot answer the last question What is this about the schedule. This is very important, I know, but uh, at the same time, this is very difficult. So uh, in my presentation, we focus on the former three questions. And actually, the, our study is investigating steady state, investigating steady state distributions of DOPOs as answers of the CIM in the long time limit to target optimization problems. And uh, to this end, we set a theoretical model of the CIMs, that is a network of DOPOs. And uh, next, we obtain focal plank equation of state distributions of the DOPOs. And our result is that the steady state distributions are obtained, and, uh, but it's under some ansatz. And uh, to verify the validity, uh, I show the benchmark in simple problems, and then correctly, and the correct solutions are find, found as stable states in the steady state distributions. So first, I explain a theoretical model of CIMs. Uh, let's consider a single DOPO at first, and uh, that is a cavity. And there is a nonlinear crystal, and uh, we have a signal field, and the uh, pump field is in, uh, and pump field is ejected from the outside of the cavity. And uh, the Hamiltonian is proposed in the literature, Durmont. And the first line is for free Hamiltonian, and the second one is coupling of a signal and a pump. And the third is for pump field. Oh, sorry. Did it? Oh. Hmm. 
Sorry, just a moment. Freeze. <laughs> Uh, the project is not. Sorry, uh, that's okay. And uh, okay, and this is a Hamiltonian, and the first line is for free Hamiltonian, and second one is coupling of pump and a signal and pump in the nonlinear crystal, and the third one is pump from uh, injected from the outside, and this is an open quantum system, so we consider also dissipation at lost Hamiltonian, and we next consider two DO periods. Uh, there are two, 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 two cavities, and we also have mutual injection paths that we are this interaction between the two DOPOs. And the signal feed from, the, from, one, from a DOPO is injected to the other DOPO mutually. And we control strings and uh, sign of interactions uh, by tuning the length of paths. And we generalize that into n DOPOs. Uh, we assume each pair of DOPOs interact as in the two DOPO case. But, and uh, we don't consider how we implement that interaction into the actual experimental setting. And uh, so I know that this could be only in theoretical idea during world. But sorry, uh, we discussed just a theory, so uh, we consider this ideal setting. And the next focal plank equation. Uh, before, the, before that, uh, I explained series one analysis. Uh, we describe, uh, then this the operator describes the system, and we use a positive P representation to describe the density operator, and we expand the density operator in terms of coherent states, alpha and beta, and uh, we obtain the distribution P. And we focus on the distribution P instead of the density operator itself. And one of the important example observable is quarter, quadrature amplitude. Uh, a is the analysis of operator of bosons, and A dagger is the creation one. And the uh, uh, average of quadrature amplitude is computed, represented as uh, the average of alpha plus beta over two over the distribution P. And why this variable is important is that the sign of quadrature amplitude is our easing variable in the CIM. So what we com try to compute is uh, that value. And to this end, we analyze the distribution P instead of the row itself. And uh, we next derive the dynamics and the focal plank equation of that distribution, uh, that is distribution P. And after some calculations, we obtain the focal plank equation. And, uh, these terms uh, show the interaction between the DOPOs, and JIJ and HI are parameters uh, appear in the using Hamiltonian for target of change problems. JIJ is a coupling constant of the using spins, and HI is for uh, longitudinal field, and C controls the strength of interactions. And then uh, we next derive the steady state distributions. Uh, in the, uh, steady state distributions are expected to be realized in the long time limit, so this is the answer of the CIM in the long time limit. And that satisfies the equation, uh, the derivative of that with respect to time is equal to zero, and we express P steady state uh, proportional to exponential minus some function phi. And uh, 
here we impose some assumption that uh, alpha i squared is equal to some constant q plus some small quantity delta. And uh, we impose this the similar assumption also for beta. And this assumption is imposed for avoiding the breakdown of the detail balance. The detail balance is, uh, gives a sufficient condition for the presence of the equilibrium state uh, distributions. So uh, for tractability or for ensuring the existence of the equilibrium state distributions, uh, we impose the assumption for avoiding the breakdown of the detail balance. And uh, under some ansatz, and uh, after some calculations, we obtain function phi uh, like this. And note that the alpha and beta are not discrete variable, but continuous ones. So we need some effect for generating easing like behavior. And the uh, first term uh, generates easing like well in the potential function. And uh, pump field strength P. Uh, controls the location and the strength uh, depth of the uh, well. And the other part uh, is for problem embedding. So uh, we tune parameters P and C to tune, uh, to adjust uh, the balance of the two parts using like well and the problem embedding part to solve, to obtain the optimal solution from the steady state distribution. So the next question is that do the steady state distribution here give the true solution of target option optimization problems by tuning the parameters P and C? So to show that, uh, I explain benchmarking simple problems and then correct solutions are obtained. Uh, the first benchmark is a uh, very non trivial one, very simple one. Uh, for fully connected parametric program where GIJ, the coupling constant of the spin GIJ is equal to 1 over 2M, uh, positive and uniform. And uh, you know, the true solution for using spins of that problem is all up or all down. And uh, the figure shows that most probable value of uh, the average of sine of alpha plus beta, and sine of alpha plus beta correspond to CIM's easing spin. So this average is uh, something like magnetization obtained from the CIM. And uh, we can calculate the most probable value of that uh, by using the method of statistical mechanics. And then the obtained result is shown in this figure in the P and C plane. And the black region uh, in the black region, DOPOs have no amplitude, so we have no solution. But with larger P and C, uh, DOPO have amplitude, and uh, obtained amplitude, uh, obtained configuration shows the uh, all up or all down. So steady state distribution gives the correct solutions in this region. This is a trivial one. So next is a little more. Uh, non-trivial one. Uh, benchmark two is benchmark one in random field. Uh, that is, the coupling constant is free connected ferromagnetic uniform one, but we add a random field, random binary field, H longitudinal field HI is equal to H0 or minus H0 at random. Uh, True solution for using spins of that problem are well known. Uh, for H0 is smaller than one over two, or up or all down is correct one. And uh, uh, for H0 larger than one over two, uh, paramagnetic state, uh, that is uh, where the spin is parallel to each field, is correct solution. And the uh, figure shows the obtained solution and uh, obtained the most probable value of our magnetization obtained from the steady state distributions. And the black region, uh, it's for DOPOs have no amplitude, so we have no solution. But uh, uh, the dashed, uh, the second region, paramagnetic state, is uh, with, cal with calculating other quantities, we can know that uh, 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 there is a paramagnetic state, and uh, with more larger P and C, all up or all down obtained. 
So uh, this is for AC0 is smaller than 0 0.5. So the correct solution or is all up or all down. So uh, it seems, oh, sorry, it seems to be uh, making a mistake uh, in the small PNXC region. But, uh, but by using the uh, normalized field, effective field, uh, H0 over M, M is an average of um, quadrature amplitude, uh, we find the correct phase transition point obtained from the uh, steady state distributions. Uh, the three curves uh, show the result. Uh, magnetization for different set of P and C, and uh, uh, the value of value are shift, uh, vertical shifted. So uh, anyway, the three curves show the uh, show that the steady state distribution gave the uh, true phase transition point. So we can obtain the uh, correct solution by the uh, calculating the P st uh, steady state distributions. And summary. <coughs> Uh, steady state distribution of a model of the CIM is investigated, and what I want to know is what problem the CIM can solve. And the steady states as answers of the CIM is a long time limit is analyzed, and uh, as a benchmark, parametric problem with and without random field are solved by tuning parameters. And uh, outlook is uh, we've tried only uh, simple problems, so. Uh, we have to next try to uh, solve other difficult optimization problems. And uh, we just, we analyze just a steady states. So uh, we next uh, investigate dynamics itself. And the uh, most important ultimate question to be solved is what is the schedule that guarantees the CIMs to obtain optimal solutions? And this is a very important next task to, this, to be done. And uh, after that, we may be able to discuss the speed or computational time uh, needed to be to obtain optimal solution. So it's an important future work. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thanks. We have time for one question. Uh, hello. So usually Fokker-Planck equation has uh, some finite temperature, and in your case you have showed this plot of uh, uh, sum of signs that divided by the number of uh, effective spins in your system, and it looked like it was exactly one, but it wasn't probably exactly one. It was like one minus this effective temperature, so something like 0 0.999, I, I don't know. So. Do you know what is the effective temperature in terms of this Ising variables? Oh. In the dynamics, uh, uh, G plays a, uh, parameter G plays a role of temperature in this dynamics. G is a, uh, G stems from coupling of string, a signal in the pump in the crystal and uh, dispersion to the outside. So T is plays a role of temperature in this dynamics. Is that okay? Okay, let's uh, thank the speaker again. <laughs>